I'm going to talk about how to optimize your Google My Business listing for best practices, some very basic stuff, but also some nice little off-page hacks that'll help you rank higher in the Maps Pack. So I'm going to be using our agency Webris as an example for this. First things first, you absolutely have to have a verified location if you want to play in local SEO now. We just went out and we got verified uh, virtual desks at a bunch of different co-working spaces around the country. We set them up there, we got the postcard, we got it mailed, and we got them verified. So without that, if you're not willing to invest that amount of money, don't even try to do the local, the, the multiple location SEO. You've got to have verified listings in each one. So I'm going to walk you through how I'm going to actually do this live in front of you, optimize our DC office page. So after you've got it set up, I've got some images and stuff set up here. Let me just run you through what's in here. So first things first, let's go to the info tab. And what's here is just your basic info. It's got the address, which again has to be tied to a verified listing. Your hours, pretty straightforward, whatever they are. Special hours. If you're like a coffee shop or something, you want to add, you know, Christmas hours, holiday hours, weekend hours, stuff like that, whatever it may be. In terms of the phone number, you should really try and have a dedicated phone number per location, especially if you are a on-demand type business or somebody that's going to actually stop into the store. Or for example, like if you're a restaurant, right? You don't want to have an 800 number. You people want to get in touch with that local business. For us, since people don't necessarily stop into our office, we have an 800 number that's standardized across all of our agency. Um, so for B2B stuff like that, where people aren't going to be coming in in person or people aren't going to be asking about like, you know, daily specials or things like that, an 800 number is fine. But other than that, you should really try and have a localized number per location. This is really important too. So a lot of people will have this linking to their homepage. What you want to do if you have multiple locations, you want to have a dedicated page on your site for each location. I'm going to show you that in one second. If you only have one location, just use your homepage here. That's absolutely fine. So what I mean by that is let me just pull it open here. So on our website here, this is webers.org slash locations. We've actually got a, a little map here and it's got a link to each page on our office. We've also got a link to the maps page. So here's a DC one. So I'm just going to click. Um, well, that one's not fully done yet. So I'm going to click on our Miami location here. Uh, well, it's done either way. So this is our DC page. Um, and what we've got here is we've, I'm not going to go into too much about the whole local SEO process because I'm planning on launching a massive training about that, talking about schema, talking about everything. Let me just reload this real quick. But basically, you just want to have a page on your website that you can deep link to that's talking specifically about that location, that city. That's a dedicated page. You can see we've got the, uh, the maps list, all listed and stuff in here. You want to have that and have it linked from each location. Again, that's only if you're going after multiple location SEO. If you're only doing one location, you can just use your home page, your service page, whatever you're comfortable with. After that, this is what we're going to spend the most of the time talking about here is the photos um, because this is where it gets very time consuming. So again, I'm going to be addressing you as if you have multiple locations because single location local SEO is really easy. So for identity photos here, uh, we actually like to go out and we like to design custom logos and background images for each of our locations. So you can see here, this one's for DC. It's got the capital in the background. This one here is for Fort Lauderdale. It's got the beach in the background, a picture of Fort Lauderdale. It's just a nice little custom image. And it's also got the keywords in the title here. Uh, just letting Google know that like, hey, this is its own individual location. Um, it's functioning in its own city. We're even branding it that way. Uh, and it's good for users too and searchers and stuff like that. All that behavior is really important and people are actually looking at these images surprisingly. So all you're going to do is you're just going to upload these images. Again, I like to get a nice little custom logo done for each location. Still mentioning the brand, still doing all that stuff. Um, just waiting for this to load. So now I've got those two things done. The rest of the photos are really important too. And this is actually going to echo across what we do off the page too. So I'm going to show you how to get these photos. So Whatever you do, don't go out and grab like stock photos. What I like to do is if you can't take your own pictures in these cities, that's fine. I just go to Google and I'll actually take the location. And especially for us, because we're in a co-working space, I know I can find these images online. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take the address and I'm going to come to Google and I am going to search this location. And then I'm going to come over here to images. Now, so what we're looking for, we're looking for images, where's the images here? We're looking for interior photos. So inside the business, exterior, outside, photos at work, and team photos, okay? So for this, uh, this is actually the virtual office. So I'm just gonna look for three different interior photos, nice looking photos, this one looks good, and I'm just gonna take a screenshot of it. I'm not gonna download it, I'm gonna take a screenshot of it like this. So that's one, that's two. We wanna get the best photos possible. Sometimes that's not always an option. Um, 
and let me try and find a nice third one here. I like the horizontal images here. Uh, this is cool. Even though this is the Marriott, nah, that's the, it's the Marriott. I'm not going to use that. Uh, let's use this one here. Okay. So that's our three inside images. So next we want to get exterior photos. So I'm looking for anything on the street level that can help us to uh, help people identify what the building looks like. Here's just another picture. I'm just going to take this again. You know, it's not overly, you know, critical to get the best ones, but I'm really looking for images that can help people that if, if they're in the area and actually tell Google, because Google's pretty, pretty intelligent now about uh, reading images and that's really where they're going. So we definitely want to make sure that we're telling the right story with these pictures. Okay, so I just took five. We want to try and get three each. Now let's get uh, photos at work. Uh, so let's look for people that are actually inside the office. Uh, let me try this. Office. Let's try this. Okay, so this one's cool. This is a better actually interior one. So you can switch up the keywords a little bit. Um, we can switch up the keywords a little bit to try and find these different images. Here's a dude in here actually. So this is good. It's actually a picture of a person. Here's another one. Come on, load. Taking a little bit while to load. I'm just making sure that I'm grabbing the high res version of this. Okay. So I'm just gonna grab this now. Okay, so we've got all of our images now. And then for team photos, I've actually got our own team photos here in Google Drive. So I'm just gonna download all these real quick. It's just zipping them. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you how to open these quick. If you're on my team, you'll have access to these photos. That's not really a problem. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to team photos and I am just going to drag and drop all these. And we're using the, these across all of our pages because it's a very, um, so there's all of our team. Uh, and the next thing that we're going to do now is come over here to our desktop with all these screenshots. Okay. We've got all these screenshots here and we want to actually add some keywords to these images here to just kind of uh, give them a little bit of extra relevancy and to really drive home. So I'm just going to organize these really quick into the three buckets. So this is in, inside office, inside office, inside office, inside office, outside, uh, outside, outside. This is not the right photo. This is team. Anybody with a person, I'm just going to make this team. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to brand these. I'm not going to name them like, you know, DC SEO agency. I'm going to name this Webris uh, DC office. And I'm just going to copy this because I'm going to use that same route for all of them. And I'm going to call this like conference. So, cause this is a conference. You can't really see it. Um, we're going to call this office. We're going to call this reception. So basically just like these nice little branded, um, branded titles here to let Google know that uh, it's just some extra keywords. So I'm just going to call this like people. I'll call this one like kitchen. Call this like team meeting. Now these are the outside ones. So again, I'm just going to call this like outside. I'm going to call this like directions. You know, just basic things. Um, call this like coffee shop. Coffee shop. And obviously, if you have, if you can take your own photos, that's that's going to be the best option for you. But if you can't, then um, you know this will have to do. So let's call this team outside. Okay, so now that we've got all of these photos named, you can see down here I'm running this program called Picasa. And what Picasa does, it allows you, this is actually a Google owned program. You can download it for free. You can geotag images in maps. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select all these eight images or 10 images that I just had. And I'm going to take the address and I'm going to append the address to, I don't know where our, where our office is. So I'm going to have to grab this. Where's DC at? Right here. I'm just going to grab this office location, uh, Washington, DC. I'm going to search for it. Put, it says put 12 photos here. I'm going to click OK. And then bam. So you can see here these little geotags here. Now these images, wherever they go on the web, it's also going to be geotagged with our company's location data, which is really powerful. So now I'm just going to take this and upload them to here. So interior photos, which ones are the interiors? Drop these in. 
So this is really powerful stuff, right? I mean, it's nice little hacks that uh, exterior office now, drag these in. Um, you know, this is going to help follow us around the web. It's going to help add those like really precious and valuable localized signals to this content that's attached to our page. Um, and then bang. So now what we've got here is a fully optimized Google My Business page. And also I'm going to add this little background photo that I have over here. Uh, where are we at? It's a nice little, another custom header photo that we made for this, for this page. There it is right there with the little DC in the background. So that's that. And then after that, um, the Google My Business listing page is done. So what we're going to do next is actually I like to do this on Pinterest because Pinterest is another gives you another option to add this geotag data and also some branded some branded boards here. So what I do is I always create um, I just call it Webris DC Office. I'm going to click create. And now this is kind of a mission because we have to upload these one by one and I'm not going to do them all here for you, but I'm just going to show you why Pinterest is, is really cool for something like this. So we just go to upload and then I'm just going to take this and then what you can do is you can append a destination URL. So I'm actually going to split this between, let me just get our location page here. I'm going to split this between, where's Pinterest, between here. Uh, and then I'm just going to add this to our board. So I'm going to add upload all these photos to our board. Uh, I'm going to add another one here from actually from the maps location. So now I'm going to grab, oops, sorry. I'm going to grab the maps location here. So cancel and I'm going to grab Google maps. So this is now tying these pictures to the actual physical maps location on the page, which is pretty cool. Um, uh, so now this one, and then what else you can do too, this is pretty cool. So I'm just going to save this here real quick. Uh, okay. So now what you can now do is you come back in here and you edit these and you actually can append Foursquare data to this too, which is actually even more geo, geo. You just click edit right here and then you can do name and city. I don't think we're set up on Foursquare yet. Let me just try this though, Webris DC. So it, this is actually tied to Foursquare, but like, you know, we actually have our Miami location set up. So basically what you want to do is set up Foursquare too. So that way you can geotag these photos based on Foursquare. You can also paste the address in there, but it's nice to actually tie it to a business. And then I like to add a nice little custom image here too. So something like Webris is a DC based digital marketing agency. Stop by today, something like that, right? Let me just make this actually say digital and then click save. So you go through all the photos and upload them here. And then what you have here is you've got a nice little branded uh, Pinterest board for your agency and then for each location. So when we take a look at our boards here, you can see we've got one for San Fran, New York City, and these are all geotagged. And what happens now is when people are searching for, you know, Webris Miami, Webris San Fran, these are some really nice citation pages that are all geotagged that will actually rank in branded search, which is good because it helps you allow to control your brand. It's very powerful stuff. So that's Pinterest. You also want to take these and upload that you want to have a Yelp page for all your pages. Uh, and you want to upload these photos here too. So all you have to do is, you know, sign up for Yelp My Business, um, go to business information, actually, sorry, photos and videos, make sure everything is the same, locations page, uh, and upload the photos here too. Uh, let me just go back to business information real quick. So you can see, so you can see here we've got the same number, same address, and then same location pages like I showed you before. Make sure you're always using that URL across all of your different pages. Um, and then again, obviously you want to get on Foursquare. I just talked about that. I'm not going to go through that now. Something also that's relatively new that I want to talk about is Facebook. So Facebook actually allows you now to add multiple locations. You've got to be signed up for um, Facebook Business Manager. And then what you can do is you can actually apply to have locations. You have to go through a little application process, but they approved us in like eight minutes. It was pretty straightforward. And then you get all these locations. So you can see here, you know, we've got one in Miami, we've got one in Fort Lauderdale. It's just more geotag stuff. So you can see all of our locations across uh, the country here, Boston, New York City. So what I'm actually going to do now is this will actually, as opposed to creating all brand new Facebook pages for you, you create these Facebook pages through Facebook. Uh, so let me show you here real quick. So let me just pull up the DC one right here. So you can see here this DC page and it's called facebook.business.facebook.com slash web or CC. You can see I already uploaded the same branded photos here. So you want to do that for each one. And then what I want to do is just also take these and create a photo album, right? Because it's kind of nice. So we'll take all of this right here and just upload these as a photo album to Facebook as well. So it's just getting some more branded content on your pages. Um, so again, where were these taken? Uh, we do this Webris DC. 
So we can geotag these as well. It's right here. Uh, blah, 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 untitled album. So we'll call this Webris DC office location. And then again, Webris is a DC based SEO agency. And then I'm just gonna click post. And now what we've got again, is just some more branded content on there. And then what I like to do too, is I just like to save all of these images to a Google Drive folder so we have them in the future because if other location services come up, if other photo sharing, and we wanna upload them to like Flickr or something like that, that we can just grab them from here and upload them really quickly. So that's the process that we use. It's pretty easy. It's just kind of t tedious and time consuming, but it's very powerful. Um, you know, it's not going to help you rank right away, but when you're doing this stuff in conjunction, you can see here again, the URLs link, the, the location, all that stuff. When you're doing this stuff in conjunction with everything, uh, it gets very powerful and it adds all these very rich signals to Google that, Hey, we are a local business and Hey, we're trying really hard to get visibility. So when you tie this stuff with your link building, um, you know, your local blogger outreach or your normal citation process, it just adds another layer of relevancy. That's really, really powerful. So if you have any questions, please leave, please leave them in the comments and I'll answer